So today we'll see how to apply formatting to our data using few shortcuts. I'll be also explaining you what is the importance of formatting and uh, how quickly you can do if you know these shortcuts. And these shortcuts I'll be sharing with you after the session. Okay. Okay. So now you get to see this data over here. This is an employee database. So this is all well, the data is fine, but you look at it, we don't have any formatting applied on this. So there is no proper alignment, no borders. So no proper spacing given between the rows. So you see the data is very congested and not in a proper shape. So most of us, we do this with our data as well. So we work hard on, you know, getting reports and those things. So we don't give much importance for the beautification of it or uh, for me to say it is formatting. We ignore it uh, in the most cases thinking it is going to take a lot of time. But if you master a few shortcuts, it will save a lot of your time and also keep your data in a visually aesthetic way. How to make it that way. So let's see. So I'll be telling which shortcut I'm using when I'm uh, performing this formatting part. And I'll also be sharing the list of these shortcuts after the session along with the video link. Fine. So I'll first select the data. You need to first select the entire data. Then you need to first set the column width. See the column width has to be adjusted first of all. You can see here most of the data is not visible completely because the width is either too big or too small. So let us adjust that. I'll use Alt O C A. So this is the shortcut I used Alt O C A. So this will auto fit the column width based on the lengthiest data present in that column the column will be adjusted automatically. But again, this isn't sufficient for us. So if at all I enter another value which is longer than the one that is already present, it again becomes congested. So we should see that a little more breathing space is given to these columns rather than going, you know, sticking to the actual width uh, for the data that is present here. So to modify the column width, we have another shortcut here that is alt o c w so this is to modify the column width now let me apply that i want to modify the name column width let's say alt o c w you need to only choose the column for which you are changing the width i'll choose this name column i'll set it to 25 now now i want to set the same width to division, department, and manager. So these three columns also, I would like to give the same width. See, if we are repeating the same action, I need not again go back to use this Alt OCW. Just like you have Control Z, Control Z for undo, you have Control Y for redo. Redo the previous action. See, we change the width of the name column. I'll repeat that on this department column here and say control Y. You can see the same width would have been applied. I'll repeat the same on these two columns as well. Just say control Y. Now, I also want to in increase the width of employee ID and region, but the width I want to provide is different. It's not 25. So I would like to give some 10, something like that. I'll choose employee ID. Alt O C W. I'll give this so you can see it's 6.89. I'll just change it to 10. Now I'll repeat the same on region column. Say control Y, it will increase. Now that we have provided enough space for the data in these columns, we'll also see how to increase the width, uh, that is, height of the rows. Now why? Because you can see here the data is very placed very close to each other. I would like to provide a little more breathing space between the rows. 
So I'll just increase the height of the rows here. Select all those rows whose height has to be increased. Use Alt O R E. I'll write that down for you. See here, I'll just make it 18. You can see now the height of the row has increased. Let's say Alt O R E. That is the shortcut for row height. See, I have typed these uh, keys which has to be pressed separately. That is one at a time. Alt once, O once, C once, A once. So in that order you need to press. So any keys which you have to press together, I'll be using plus to signify that. Now here I have kept, I mean, I have typed them with a space indicating you need to press one key at a time. Now next, so now that we have provided enough column width, row height, these things, let's see how to quickly give borders to our data. See, you need to again, for select the entire data like this, use control one together, control one. So when you do that, this format cells window will appear. See this control one is a universal key. Which object you select and give control one. So the formatting options for that particular object will appear. Now I have selected cells. I gave control one. Window to format those cells have appeared. Now if I did the same with shape or chart or image, let's say. So the same thing would happen options to format that object will appear okay so i have selected the cells gave control one we have got the format cells window let's go to border section here choose the color of the border so now what color border do you want to provide you just select from this or if you wish to choose from more colors you could also go there and choose see if you don't wish to uh, provide any color that is appearing here you can always go for more more colors so i'll do i'll choose one of these so let's say i take this one i'll apply borders so again you see two set of lines here one is thick and the other is thin see these thick lines have to be used only for the purpose of providing outline don't use it for inside borders. It looks flashy and unprofessional and it doesn't enhance your data. This border will be hitting the face. So you should use these thick lines for outline purpose. You can also see the preview here. Choose thin lines for inside borders. Any of these lines is fine. And click OK. You can see the borders have been applied now. So next thing, I would like to highlight my column headers. I'll use the same color that we gave for the border here so that it looks more professional like this. Say always don't use too many colors even that will spoil the formatting. Uh, max to max two colors which goes well with your theme you can just choose that. And if you have selected light color let's uh, let's keep the text in the dark mode or if you have kept it in the dark color make the text light so uh, there should be a contrast in order to maintain the visibility of the text on that color now anyways i have selected a light color for providing this border as well as the cell color i'll keep the text black the next thing that you have to do is align always your cell headers so the column headers should be aligned center and i'll also vertically align it to middle once you're done with this we still have scope to improve our data over here you can see though we have given enough space and all that the name column the values are very close to the border over here so I'm going to tell you what are the standard ways of applying this formatting here. So when you have the data of this type where the length is not same, it is varying. 
you need to keep it left aligned but let's say you want to give a little space from the border you can always use this increase indent which is available in the alignment group go click on it you see you get a small uh, you know it starts from a little far away from the border i would like to repeat the same with division department and manager i'll select this I'll say control y fine so now that's done now for the data which has got uniform length so throughout the column it is of the same length let's say you are going to select that and keep it center aligned and say control y okay just look at the data now just few minutes ago you saw a different picture altogether this wasn't looking like this so now if you provide your data in a neatly formatted way so it will be easier on the eyes of the user and the understanding of this data will also increase so if the readability has increased definitely the data's understandability will also increase so that's where you need to apply these formatting shortcuts and quickly format your data i had to show you this how we applied borders i used control one fine So now let's see how to use cell references in our excel application say cell references you all have used this if you have used excel say for very simplest of formulas or functions that you use in excel we require the cell reference so how say i want to add two numbers let's say to begin with any formula or function in excel you give equals so this indicates excel that you are going to start giving any function or a formula over here you can also use other symbols like plus minus at all these indicate that you are going to give a function it all acts in the same way like this equal to is going to act so it's all the same now now why do we require this cell references let us see see if i have to perform any calculation let's say i have numbers in some cells like this i want to get the sum of them now what do we do we just give equals we use some function we select these cells nowhere did we type these numbers in our function we selected the cells where those numbers were present Now, if at all you change those numbers, even the result over there will change. You can see that. Now, this provision is there in our Excel application. Nowhere we go and type the numbers. So, of course, in few uh, you know very simple formulas like two into let's say one twenty three, I would like to get to know the result. I can type so, and I will still get the result. but most of the cases we will be dealing with the cells only now when you are dealing with cells while using in formula or a function you require these cell references there are three types absolute relative and mixed cell references we'll see all of them with example over here okay so now let me give two values over here on this i'll give some function i will create a copy of this i would like to paste it in other cells over here you see we don't get to see 390 in these cells we are seeing them as zero reason you look at this cell address when we refer to uh when we gave the sum function we refer to l8 and l9 so l8 and l9 these two cells were referred in our sum function where did we give this function in l10 
Now I copied the same instruction. I pasted in the other cells as well. Now you look at this cells formula. It has changed to M12, M13. Where did I paste it? At M14. So this cell is M14. You can look at the address over here. In the left hand side top corner, you will have that address mentioned in the name box. You will get to see that. So same thing, where you paste your function or a formula relative to that cell, your formula or a function is changing because you have used the relative reference. So when there is this kind of cell address, L8 and L9 without any dollars, we call it as relative reference. So the name itself suggests it is relative in nature. In relation to L10, we have selected L8 and L9, two cells above that. The same thing is happening with all the other cells where I have pasted this function. You can see here M12, M13, the same thing over here, 08, 09. We have placed that in 010, this function. It is referring to 08 and 09. You did not ask it to do so. But it is happening automatically because you have used relative reference. In relation to the cell where you paste these fu function which you are already provided in a cell, the reference in the other cells will change. That is relative reference. Now, suppose I want to use uh, or I want to see the same result in all these cells with the formula present in those cells, it's not as values. Now, let me copy this. So even before I do that, let us change the reference here. L8 and L9, I'll select it. I'll press F4. F4 is the key that is used to change your reference type. Cell reference has to be changed. Then you will press F4 here. Now, when you do that, you look at this, cell address has changed completely. You can see dollars appearing over there in the cell address. For both column reference and row reference, you see these dollars. Now press enter. Now copy this. Now let me paste it on the same cells where we see zero here. Now you look at the cell content. See, it is referring to the same two cells which was referred previously in L10. The same reference is taken. So, when you make any cell reference absolute, its reference to those cells will never change. It is dead opposite to your relative reference. In relation to any cell you paste the function or formula, the cell reference keeps changing. That is relative reference. Now when you restrict that reference of cells to a particular cells only, where you are not changing it at all, then it becomes absolute reference. So when you have to make a cell reference absolute, you need to provide these dollars. Never type dollars. It's not recommended please use only F4 key. Now that will make any cell address absolute. Okay, so this was the two extreme ends, relative, absolute. So we saw absolute and relative reference. Now we have the third type, it's known as mixed reference, where you make the cell reference partially absolute. Either row is absolute or the column is absolute, not both of them. Now when it is an absolute reference, both row and column will never change. But in case of mixed reference, you choose which part of the cell reference need to be absolute. Now when I said like cell reference, a part of cell reference, see to get a reference to a cell, you need both the column as well as the row. So only if those two are present, that is known as a cell reference. Now you see, we are placed at G8. I would like to refer to cell B8 over here. I'll press enter. 
Now, whatever is present in B8, it is appearing here for me. Now, when you copy and paste it to other cells, let's see what happens. I'll copy paste it downwards like this. You check the addresses. You look at the reference here. B8, B9, B10. You can see the reference to row numbers are changing. But the column is constant. It is the same. B has never changed. All your cell references are in B column only. Only the row numbers are changing. Now let me copy paste the same references right side. Now when you do that, you look at this. When you copy paste it towards the right side, you can see here the column reference changed. But the row reference, when you compare with these two columns, row reference is same. So by this, what do we understand is, when you copy paste from top to bottom or bottom to top in that direction, row reference will change because rows are present in that manner. When you copy paste from left to right or right to left, column references will change. You have to keep this in mind in order to provide this mixed reference. Now how that is possible, let me show. Now suppose I'll change the reference of this B8, which is relative currently, to a partially absolute reference. So let me make the column absolute. So when you keep pressing F4, the dollar position changes. You can look at that in the formula bar. Now I have placed a dollar on B. You can see here in the formula bar. I'll press enter. Now let me copy paste it below no change when you copy paste it towards the right side you look at that we are getting the same values that are present in the b column now let me show you the cell references we look at it on whichever reference i place a dollar that will be constant i placed a dollar on b b will never change so to how many ever cells you copy paste this the reference will be staying in B column. Only the row reference changes. You can see that. So it is B8, 9, 10. So row numbers are changing, but not the column reference. So even if I copy paste it below, you can see that row reference will change, but not the column reference. It will remain constant because I have made the column absolute. Now let's go back. I will change the reference of B8 again. So this time I'll make the row absolute. I'll place a dollar on the row number B$8. Let's see the change. I copy paste it towards the right side. That is changing. Column reference is changing. When you copy paste it down, row reference is not changing. Let's check. See, I placed a dollar on 8. Reference from the 8th row has not changed at all. But you can see the column numbers have changed. The column reference has changed here. From B to C, D, A, like that. So if you copy paste it further, it will continue the same way. But it will be referring to 8th row only. Now this is known as absolute row relative column. The previous one is absolute column relative row. So this is making it partially absolute. Let's go here. Now that we saw the three types of cell references, we'll see its application. I'll run this. See, we have few examples here which will show us how these cell references will be useful to us. See, one more important thing I would like to tell you here. These cell references will come into picture only when you have to copy paste your formulas or function. I've been stressing here formulas or functions. 
they these both are not the same okay functions are predefined they know what has to be done if you just provide the input to them in a proper way they'll execute that and they'll provide you the proper results but formula is what you devise it by providing all the operators like plus minus greater than less than so there are so many operators so you'll be using these things to create that expression or formula so that is a formula functions just like sum count average we look up so these are predefined they already know what has to be done you just have to provide the input and they will work fine so we never use plus this plus this number in some function we just give some function select the numbers it will add and it will provide the result to us so there are some instances where you need to combine the functions so uh, we have such examples in the other classes i'll be showing you in formulas uh, where uh, we'll combine two or three functions together to get the desired result even that is known as a formula fine so you need to know these differences so whenever we are using these functions or formulas it is usually not for a single cell you will copy paste it for an entire range uh, for which you have the data it would be usually playing around with large data over there so whatever formula you provide and copy paste it it should work fine for all the cells that are present that is when the cell reference is coming to picture fine now let me start showing you with the example now we have some data over here uh, of the products its total price everything is provided now i would like to provide 10 percent discount on the total price of these products now what will be the discount price so uh, what will be the discount amount that i will get when i apply 10 percent on the total price so how do you calculate you will just say simply equal to this into 10 percent we do this usually but again if i have to change the percentage again i have to go and change the cell formula which is not a good idea so i have placed the percentage in a cell so whatever is whatever value is present in this cell it should get multiplied with the total price of all the products that we have here now let's go here we'll give that formula this equal to select the total price i'll multiply this with the 10 percent press enter so don't worry about the number format just go and change it to general that will work fine now let me copy paste this to other cells so you gave this formula in a single cell it is working fine now once you copy paste it to few cells over here you will see the difference you look at it check if it is working fine just double click on it you can see the reference on 10 percent has changed it has moved down to one cell reference on this also moved to this one that is fine with us it should take a different total price but it should always refer to 10 percent only it should not change the reference from that cell so how to do that whenever we don't want a reference to change we make it absolute so you can look at the color codes here so this c8 is this cell d7 is the top cell which contains 10 percent so i'll make d7 absolute because whatever value is present in d7 the same value i have to use to multiply with all the other total price values here i'll press f4 you can see dollars have appeared i'll press enter now let me copy paste to the same set of cells let's look at the difference you just press f2 on this you can see the reference lies on 10 percent only it has not changed to 6724 let us check other values see even now this total price value has changed but not 10 percent now after i'm done with this i'll copy paste it to other cells we'll get it 
Now if I go and change this to any percentage value I want, you can see that it will change quickly. I don't have to go change the formula now. Whatever I keep here, it's going to calculate for that in seconds. Now that is the use of your cell reference, absolute cell reference. So when do you have to make any cell absolute? When its reference should not change in any way then we'll make it absolute so you can see in all these cells reference on this d7 is not changing but reference to the total price of different products that are available here are changing we want it to change so we have kept it relative whichever cell reference we don't want to change the reference to not change we'll make it absolute Now let's see how to use this relative, mixed reference, these things. Now on the right hand side, I have a pretty huge data here. So now I have these salesperson names. Their sales achieved in all the 12 months of the year. And what amount of percentage should be given for every month of sales that they have done? I have mentioned all these things over here. Now I should know what is the incentive amount that they get in each month. So to get that, we need to multiply the incentive percentage with the sales value over here. So to do that, let's go here. A very simple calculation, multiplication has to be done. I'll choose 8%, multiply it with the sales value over here in the Jan column. I'll press enter. Again, you copy paste it to few cells over here. Now when you do that, you see only the first row value it is giving me properly. You can check the cell reference over here. It's taking properly only in the first row. Now the next row, what happens? You can see here, the reference has moved from 8% to Jan. That's the reason we are getting those errors there. Same thing with the other cells also. Just select it. You can see reference has changed. See, we want the reference to change on the cell reference to sales. But reference from this incentive percentage should not change for us. It should remain in sixth row. So let me... Uh, provide you the headings here you'll be much more clear see in sixth row we have this incentive percentage we don't want reference to move from the sixth row but we want reference on these cells so which is starting from eighth row which is from q8 these cells reference to these cells should change so then go here make changes to this Q6, we have it selected, press F4, press enter, you copy paste it to the same set of cells here. Check if the values are working fine. Never accept the values that are coming blindly. So recheck, double check your formulas, whether they are referring to proper cell references. So let's go here. I'll just check it randomly. You see here, this value is getting multiplied with 8%. See, we should actually get multiplied with 9% here. So reference is stuck there on Q6. It is not moving at all. That's because we have made it absolute in complete manner. Now, when I say Q6 is absolute, reference from Q6 will never change. But you see here, I want to remain, I want this reference to remain in sixth row, but the column reference has to change. It should change from Q to R, R to S, T, U in this manner, but it should remain in sixth row. So what do we do here? We'll go and change the cell reference of Q6. We'll make the row absolute 
I'll keep pressing F4 until I get dollar on 6. See, 6 is the row. I want to make 6 absolute. Q, I want to keep it relative because I want it to keep changing. Press enter. Now copy paste it to the same set of cells. Now you see the results have changed. Let's check whether it is referring to the proper cells. Press F2. See? You can check here it is taking proper reference. Let us check other cells also. Just randomly pick any cell. You can see here the reference is fine now. Once you are sure of it, then you copy paste it to the entire range. I will select the entire range of cells where I have to copy paste it. I will say Control R, it will copy right. Control D, it will copy down. So why this example was given is, so whenever such kind of data is there, we have seen people giving different formula to every column. That is painstakingly lot of time, which is not an efficient way also. If you know these cell references properly, you can provide a formula or a function in a single cell, copy paste it to all the other cells where you need to apply it and it should work fine. That is the idea of this. So see what's the joy you go and change it in every cell. If you have to do so, you need not provide that formula. You can type the exact value itself, taking a calculator. Then no use of Excel here. So these formulas are, are a very efficient way, uh, can be provided in a very efficient way if you know these cell references properly. See the last topic for today. So I'll say mixed reference, how to use both the row absolute, column absolute, how to give this. So just observe. See, we need to multiply numbers present in this column. Uh, let me make the headings visible. See, numbers present in B column has to be multiplied with numbers present in seventh row. Reference from B column and 7th row should not change. Only the B column needs to be constant here and the 7th row needs to be constant. So that the reference remain in these cells. Let us start with a trial and error. I'll not give any dollars. I'll just select these cells. See, multiply with this one. Press enter, I'll select few cells and copy paste over there. You can check how it is changing the cell reference. It has moved from this place to this one and this column to this area. We need to make, as I said, we need to make this column B absolute and row 7 absolute in these cell references. Place your cursor on B8. Press F4 and press until you see dollar on B. And place your cursor on C7. Press until you see dollar on 7. Now column B is absolute. Row 7 is absolute. Now let us copy paste to these cells again. You can see the reference will remain in B and 7 through. So over here, the rows are changing, but the column is constant. And over in this cell reference, the columns are changing, but the row is constant. So you will get this by, you know, trial and error method. You will get to know where you have to place dollars, where you should not. So this comes by practice. So nothing to worry. You try it on your own and let me know if you have any doubts on this. So this was just a simple multiplication table prepared using the cell references. As an example, we took this. It was a um, you know, best example to tell you where to give dollars, where you should not, when you have to get this done.